comes. The greatest rider of them all, Buffalo Bill Jr. With his little sister, Calamity. Buffalo Bill Jr. brings you exciting action. Fun with Judge Ben Fair and Square, Wiley. Ride the road to adventure with Buffalo Bill Jr. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Men will lie, steal, even kill for it, especially when the money is buried treasure over a quarter of a million dollars in cash, buried by none other than Jesse James himself. This chest might never have been discovered if my adopted son, Buffalo Bill Jr., hadn't tangled with a couple of men who were itching to get their hands on it. One of the men was Max McCreary. Max needed some fresh horses to continue his search. And this renegade Apache was the target of his violence. Men like McCreary never think about consequences. But one crime always brings on another. And at this point, it didn't occur to Max or his cohorts that Indians, like elephants, don't forget. The next step was the murder of John Guilford, who had a ranch just outside Wileyville. Of course, at the time, we didn't know what we know now. And we all figured the killer was Guilford's hired hand, Bert Corey. Especially when one of the neighbors rode in and found Corey kneeling over Guilford's body. When we got the news in Wileyville, I sent Buffalo Bill Jr. out to bring Corey back. like this, you could have broke your horse's leg or your own neck. Yeah, what have I got to lose? You? Maybe nothing, Corey. But your horse wouldn't have liked it one bit. Now it's this way, Corey. I'm looking for the Guilford Ranch, just outside of Wileyville. A man by the name of John Guilford. Mr. Guilford's dead. He was killed this morning. Killed? How? Who did it? Kind of looks like this fella did. Anyway, I'm taking him back to Wileyville. Well, my name's Kent, Bob Kent. Well, I'm called Buffalo Bill Jr. Howdy. How are you? Why would you want to kill John Guilford? I didn't. He was dead when I got to him. Then what'd you run away for? I got in trouble once. Served a year in prison. I knew they'd accuse me, and, well, I was scared. You know, he could be telling the truth. He might. Say, Mr. Kent, won't you ride back into Wileyville with us? And we'll let Judge Ben Wiley decide. Right. This here is just plain murder. Now, look here a minute, Ben Wiley. 
Unless you come in this place to buy something, or if you ain't wanting a haircut, which you need, the name, Mr. Ricketts, is Your Honor Judge Wiley. All right, Your Honor, then. But can you explain to me how you can make a murder charge out of me suing Pedro here for $76 he lawfully owes me? Well, it's murder, all right, but I'll reduce the charges to breaking and entering. Is that all right with you, Pedro? See, si, Your Honorable Excellency. Oh, see, si, of course. Breaking and entering? How do you figure that? I'll explain it so even you will understand it. Now, Pedro, you stop me if these here ain't the facts in the case. See, si, see, si, Senor Judge. Pedro Lopez, as a defendant, you're a tenant farmer up on Cash Ricketts place, right? Si, senor. To farm these rocky acres, which he leases to you, he makes you buy your supplies from him, which he charges you for by writing it down in the book. And you're supposed to pay him back when you sell your crop. Is that so? Si, senor. Mm -hmm. Well, last year he gave you $56 in seed and supplies. And this year, $76 is written down and charged to you. Ricketts, has Pedro ever paid you any money on account? Well, some. And I credited against what he owed me on the books from last year. Uh -huh. Yeah, now this here is my books. And I find you charge Pedro more than $70 for what you bought from me for 30 odd. Yeah, a man's entitled to charge a little more for extending long time credit, ain't he? Sure, sure. But charging the way you've been doing is what's making you liable for breaking and entering. What? You keep breaking, Pedro, but what you're entering in the book. And if that ain't breaking and entering, then I ain't never heard it. I find you $77. $77? What about the money he owes me? You better pay the fine before I hold you in contempt. But I ain't said... And if I do find you in contempt... But you got no right to... Listen, if you're found guilty of contempt, you ain't got no right in this court. According to you, no one's got no right. And I'll throw you and your case plumb out of my court. Seventy-seven. There. But what am I supposed to do with all this dinero, Your Excellency? Why, pay your lawful debts, of course. And that dollar that's left over, go out and get yourself a decent meal. Looks to me like you can stand one. Well, gracias, Senor Judge. Court's adjourned. I got business over at the county seat. <laughs> Tarnation, youngin, a little harder, and I'd been flat on my back. It's Phil. He's back, and he's got cords. Well, I see you got him. Good work, Bill. He sure was a running. Well, it's liable to be the last running he'll do for quite a spell. Judge Wiley? Yes. I don't think this man killed John Guilford. What did you say? I said I don't think this man killed John Guilford. And I think I can tell you who most likely did. Well, you got a lot of talking. We got a lot of listening to do. We better go inside. Bring Corey in, Bill. There were four of us. Me, John Guilford, a man named Max McCreary, and Jesse James. We were partners riding with Quantrell's Raiders. We didn't always ride together, and it wasn't until we were all finally on the run that Guilford and McCreary and I discovered that Jesse James had held out on us. Somewhere along the trail, he'd gotten hold of over a quarter of a million dollars in cash and hidden it, buried it where only he could find it. Jesse had a map showing where the money was buried. When we caught up with him, we forced him to divide it into four parts, and we each took a part, promising to meet later, put our parts of the map together, and dig up the money, and share it equally. That was the last time the four of us were ever together. 
We split up and went our own ways. I finally went east to live, and Guilford ended up ranching down here in Wileyville. McCreary was caught and went to prison. You know what happened to Jesse James, how he was shot in the back. For a while, as best we could, we kept in touch with one another, long enough to find out that McCreary had gotten a hold of Jesse James' part of the map. Two weeks ago, McCreary was released from prison without letting either Guilford or me know about it. And you figure this McCreary man is trying to get a hold of the other two parts of the map so he can get the money himself, huh? I came down here to warn Guilford, but... You think McCreary got here before you and killed him? I told you I didn't do it. Now, hold on just a minute. Now, this might be the answer, but it ain't evidence. And a court of law has got to have evidence. It all adds up, Judge. Yes, and you having the last piece of map makes you a prime candidate for a bullet in the back, if this McCreary is still in these parts. He sure is, Judge. Remember the Indian horses that were stolen and the missing supplies from Mr. Ricketts' place? What are you yammering about? Calamity's right, Judge. Shovels and stuff from Ricketts, horses from the Indians. Well, somebody stole them, and it could be McCreary because it makes sense. Yeah, you might be right. I understand the Indians are mad enough to start another war. And Mr. Ricketts ain't very happy. Bert, Corey, you're still under arrest for murder. Bill, I'm remanding the prisoner to the county seat for trial. You'll deliver him tomorrow to the marshal. And also tell that marshal to start a countywide search for this McCreary. Yes, sir. Mr. Kent, I'm going to hold you in protective custody as a material witness. You'll go along with Bill to the county seat. Very well, Judge. Calamity, how would you like to have some new clothes? Would I? Oh, boy. I've got some business over at the county seat myself. So bright and early in the morning, we'll all take a trip there, huh? Oh, Judge. Oh, oh, my back. Watch my back, honey. Watch my back. <laughs> Indian ponies. Tracks can't be more than a couple hours old. Well, I guess I wasn't so far wrong when I said those engines were mad. Something wrong? Yeah, we're a long ways from the reservation. Indians out here where they don't belong can only mean one thing. Trouble. Yeah, stealing a renegade Indian's horse is worse than committing suicide. They never rest till they track you down. Well, we didn't take their horses. It was McCreary. A renegade redskin itching to lift scalps doesn't stop to ask which one is McCreary. Gee, we've gone too far to turn back. We'll never make the county seat before tomorrow. How about it, Bill? Well, it sure isn't safe to travel after dark. We'd best hold up for the night. Where? I got an idea. It's a little out of our way, but we'll be safe there. It's the old deserted shack up there by Potter's Lake. Where did you say? Potter's Lake. It isn't far. Come on. Come on, Corey. Judge, if you and Mr. Kent will take care of the horses, I'll get some water and see about getting dinner started. All right, son. Here, Judge. You get inside and stay there. Keep an eye on him, honey. Get a fire started. Come on, let's go. Here, Clamity. Let me help you. Thanks. Over 
I understand, I you. Not a word or I'll kill your brother. Do you understand? Do you? Get up. Remember now, not a sound. The sun will be down in a half hour, and it'll be too dark to trail him. But I could have tried. You remember the Indian tracks? We'll all be safer if we stick together. You're right, Judge. Well, let's get some food and a good night's rest, and we'll get an early start tomorrow morning. That's right, son. And the authorities at the county seat will have to send out an alarm on Corey as well as McCreary. Let's put the horses away. Come on. That better? Yeah, thanks. Your horse broke his leg up in the hills there in some rocks, threw you on your head, knocked you out. The boys here found you and brought you in. Where were you heading for, rushing through the hills at night like that? Oh, it's that way, huh? On the run. Well, never mind, we're in the same fix ourselves. What are they after you for? They think I killed old man Guilford. You hear that? They think he killed Guilford. So they blame that on you. Well, never mind. We'll take care of you. Even got an extra horse for you, thanks to some engines. Grab yourself some chow. What's your name, feller? Bert Corey. Mine's McCreary. Max McCreary. You're the one that killed Guilford for the map. What do you know about a map? Nothing. I swear, nothing. Was there a man named Kent there? Bob can't answer me. What do you know about a map and a man named Bob Kent? I don't know nothing, I swear it, nothing!
Curry better do as he says. Hello, Bob. Been a long time, hasn't it? Corey! I told you I didn't do it. pieces of paper. Put them together and you got yourself a quarter million dollars in cash. Mr. Jesse James' private little nest egg. With those three pieces, I had everything I needed except the name and the place. I figured it was some kind of a lake or something, but I didn't know the name or where. Now for your piece, Mr. Kent. Save yourself the trouble, Max. The name is Potter's Lake. And it's right out there. <laughs> uh, poor Guilford. Sitting practically right on it and didn't know it. <laughs> Take him outside down to the lake. We got us some digging to do. Got to be right in here someplace. Hey, he's got it. Get that off of there, quick. Indians. Head on the ground, everybody. Clem, untie my hands. Yeah, get yours. Now, untie the judge. We have to worry about it. Hold it. We've run them off. Now! Judge, if you don't mind, I'd like to see my treasure. Well, Mr. Kent, you claim to be the rightful owner of this chest and what's in it? That's right, sir. Then I'm pleased to inform you you're no longer in custody as a material witness. Bill, arrest this man. Well, what's the charge? The charge is armed robbery. This is the evidence, and you just identified it as belonging to you. Well, I'll... Yes, I'm afraid you will, Mr. Kent, for a long time. Well, we might as well see what you're going to jail for. 
Corey, shoot the lock off of that chest. Well, there it is, Mr. Kent. Your quarter of a million dollars. Confederate currency. <laughs> Buffalo Bill Jr. Now with his horse and with his gun, he's not afraid of anyone. Cause no one's quicker on the draw or quicker to defend the law. Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. He's the son of a son of a gun. Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. 